Hey guys, Drifter here. Today we're going to be reviewing the Games Vanguard. This is the top of the line product from the newly funded Games Company. If you haven't noticed, I'm no longer in my old house. I just moved into my new house and uh, that was probably the perfect time to test this because this is sort of a gaming accessory for people that travel. I'm going to go ahead and open it up real quick. Uh, you can see how the games logo is spelled. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But long story short, you have your console in there and a TV here and you can play on the go. I'm going to do a demo of it, but I'm going to tell you why I waited so long to test it. What it is, is I've been moving, and I decided to pack away my old TV early and use this for about a solid week to get a feel for how good it was. And I've been using it a little bit here because our house had some repairs, and they said, you know, it's okay, you're good to move in now. There's a few things that might be inconvenient, but you should be comfortable. This is my super inconvenient non-sync. While I'm not an interior decorator, I'm pretty sure the closet is not where my toilet is supposed to be. And as you can see, I very greatly have a need for a mobile gaming environment of some sort or a way to play Xbox on the fly. I haven't done it as much as I could have, would have, or should have if my lovely camera woman wife hadn't had a lot of interesting chores for me to do or Ozzy needed my attention. But I've been using this a lot. I've got a very detailed review for you coming up. It's going to be long, but we're going to go over everything. And I actually contacted the company to get some stats, some specifics about the monitor and stuff that you're not going to find anywhere. Not on the product pages, not on YouTube, not anywhere else on the internet. So if you're interested in the nitty gritty of this product, this is the review to watch. Now, this is the part of the review where I would like to discuss my affiliations and biases with the games company, which is spelled like this, as in games. A little bit funny. We might talk about that later. But for those of you that don't know, I'm a part owner of Team Envious, the competitive team. Games is relatively new to the market, and they are currently sponsoring Team Envious and several other pro teams. By that affiliation, I am thus technically sponsored by the games company. They're one of my official sponsors now. On top of this, I received a product for review for free. I paid nothing for this. It's quite an expensive product, but I got it for free. And I was also given a coupon code to distribute for you. When you use the coupon code, you'll get a percentage off on the product, and it registers on a site saying that I have sold one using my affiliate commission, and I get paid a little bit for it. I don't get paid a lot for it. The value of this device is probably many times what I would make if even quite a number of you purchased the device. And uh, no matter what anybody pays me, nobody pays me enough to be biased. For those of you that have been on this channel long enough, you know that my reviews are in-depth, they're technical, and occasionally a little bit mean, so that's what we're going to go over with the games today. There's quite a few things I like about this product, and there are also several things which this product falls short on and could use some love. We're going to talk about all of that coming up next. The first thing I thought I should test is the durability. And the only way to test the durability is to be a little bit of mean to it. So we're going to go back and talk to past me and see how the durability test is going. Thank you, future me. This is past me loading up the U-Haul getting ready to move. And like you said, I thought the best way to test this out would be to load it up like luggage, kind of like on an airplane if I don't fall off the ramp here. And loosely pack it in here so to get knocked around, kicked about, I've got my Xbox in it, all my cables and everything else, and we are going to see how it does. Let me see if I can spot it in here amongst all this junk. Now you should be able to see it down there. It's in a position where it's going to be shaking around a lot and might get smashed once or twice. And the end goal is, at the end of the video, ooh, we are going to see if it's intact. We're going to see if the monitor works, and we're going to see if the Xbox is still functional. And that's going to be a very good test of the durability of this product. Thank you, past me. I have not used it since unloading it at the U-Haul. I use it at my other house moving it around, but here it has not been turned on since the U-Haul trip. It was kicked around a lot. When you open it up, you have this panel. What this item does is it prevents your Xbox and your screen from touching because the screen is very sensitive, and you shouldn't have these two no-no regions touching each other. It's going to come with a lot of stickers. I put a few extra in here from Scuff. We're going to go over the stickers later because that's actually a major problem with this product. Uh, it'll come with these two bags and they're designed. It does not come with the Xbox. The Xbox does not come with it. But we're going to see how fast we can set it up. So. Get out of here. Nice cushy bottom for your Xbox to sit on. This is also PS3 compatible, several versions of the PS3. We're going to be talking about which consoles it does and does not work on later. But for now, all I have is an Xbox, so I felt it would be appropriate to test it on Xbox. And here's my Xbox's flux capacitor. Xbox manages to keep the size of their console down by not having 
this thing be an internal element. I sure hope that power supply works. It looks like it does. Okay. Another key feature of the device, or important thing to remind, it only works on HDMI cables. There is no component cable input. Jessica, you want to get a really nice close-up of the inputs here? I can get it in the light a little bit more. But as you can see, we've got a power input. We have an input for one or two speakers, for those of you using headsets, and HDMI. There are no component cables. There are no uh, red, white, and yellow cables. It runs on HDMI only. And if you're not doing HDMI, well, you've got problems. Get this down here a little bit. There we go. What else? Let's back her up a little bit. Get back to the unpacking. That's not part of it. This is the game's power supply. It also cut down on a little bit of space by having a power supply that unplugs. Contrary to popular belief, it does not run on battery. There's no battery supply for this bad boy. So you can't just take it anywhere in the world and expect your batteries to work. You're going to have to have some place to plug it in. If you're working in a car with a power adapter, that'll work. If you're on an airplane, as long as it's an appropriate, that'll work. If you somehow magically have space for it. Anywhere that there's a normal uh, wall power supply, it'll work. There we go. Now, where did I put my remote? Ah, it comes with a mini remote. So let's try and turn it on. See what we've got here. Again, I haven't turned it on in several days, so if it's broken, this will be a surprise to me. And let's turn on the Xbox. Let's see what we've got. I'm going to do this. It's a little scuff controller. Looks like it's working to me. Yep. Uh, like I said, I just got to my new house. I haven't configured it to work with internet, but it does appear to be working just fine. So I would say that's a pass on the durability test. And as a side effect of the durability test, you got to see kind of how it sets up and kind of how it works. Uh, I would say that the unit is durable. It's not a tough book. It's not military ready. I did talk to a, a subscriber on Twitter that said that his son bought one of these and it did uh, a tour or two in Afghanistan. Though I, I wasn't exactly there to watch it the whole time. I don't know how accurate that is. It is designed to survive normal airport treatment. It's kind of like luggage. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off again real quick. It is not designed to survive explosives. It is not designed to survive beatings. It is not designed to be brutalized or tormented. But as long as you're relatively nice to it and treat it like a respectable piece of luggage, it will be kind to you. It will not fail you. I have not yet found a way to easily break it, but there are some flaws with this device. Let's start with the biggest and most obvious flaw is that if you go to their website and you try to order it, this will say it is an airplane ready device. This is TSA certified. This is TSA approved. This is, this is a device that goes through the scanners that you take and you put on your overhead on the plane. Okay. Inside the box, when you buy this, it's going to come with a sheet of stickers, which you probably can't see very well on the camera, and I know you're thinking, oh my god, Drifter, what's wrong with the stickers? Keep in mind, this device has to go through an airport scanner, and Jessica, let's rotate around. Let's go ahead and put sticker number one on here. What's sticker number one, if I can get it peeled? These are definitely not uh, TSA-friendly stickers. Here's sticker number one, a bomb. Let's go to sticker number two. What's sticker number two going to look like? Jessica, what do you think it's going to look like? I bet you it's not the Loch Ness Monster. I bet you it's something to absolutely guarantee that I get probed. Up oh, a missile! Lovely! And I know you're thinking, okay, whatever, you know, it's just cute little bombs and missiles, you know. Nobody would... Uh-oh. What the hell? Okay, see, now the TSA guy is starting to really eyeball me, and he's like, Sir, I'm going to need you to step out of the line and come over here, and we're going to need to screen you. And we're going to need to make sure that this is a safe device. And I'm like, but I haven't broken any laws. I have my constitutional rights. I can't be searched. And you're going to hear him talking to his cuff. Uh-oh. Time to get the anal probe ready because this clearly is not good news. I'm going to be in the little dark back room talking to the federal guys. They probably haven't even bothered to open it yet. They'd be like, sir, are you a terrorist? Are you working with Al-Qaeda? We see you trying to go through the TSA with luggage that's clearly marked biohazard, gas mask. It could contain bombs, grenades, or knives. And uh, you could be a target, or oh, here's a good one. This is like this is like Daffy Duck, cartoonishly. Uh, if I can get a damn sticker off, cartoonishly wrong 
bombs. And I know you're thinking I'm just being specific, like uh, being picky here. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep laying the stickers on here until I'm out. And you're gonna see exactly how many <laughs> of these things they expect you to put on here. Oh, here's a tank, that's good. That's definitely what we need, tanks on our luggage. Lovely, I just put the tank on there wrong. Can I fix the tank? Nope, he's a special tank now. So, I've got a few left, but you can see that this is not something that's going to go through the TSA. You're dead, tank. This is something that when it does go through the TSA, my butthole is about three times bigger than before. So if you purchase one of these devices, you should never, ever, ever put any of these stickers on there, no matter what, because they will get you in serious trouble. And as soon as this review is done, I'm gonna peel all of these stickers off. My wife had a little joke regarding anuses, because she's a nurse, she wanted to share with you. What is this uh, anus-related joke? Well, after the TSA is done looking through this, and your butthole, it'll probably be about this size. <laughs> Just a reference, that's not a good size for my butthole to be. All jokes aside, I would like to reiterate that this device is designed to be used in overhead storage on airplanes. It is actually TSA certified, approved, whatever. It'll get you through. You won't get in trouble with this, but the stickers were almost comically bad for a, tra for a travel device. So at this point in the review, I would like to talk about which devices the games PGE is compatible with. As you can see, it's clearly compatible with what this would be. Uh, I think this is the Xbox 360 Slim. This is the newest version of the Xbox. It's actually compatible with all versions of Xboxes as long as they have an HDMI cable. If you're running through the one HDMI cable, it'll work. If you have like the six or seven red, green, blue, yellow, turquoise uh, component cables, it won't work because there's no plugs for that. It is also PS3 compatible. It's designed to work with the PS3 Slim, if I'm not mistaken. I have a little notepad over here. Let me check. Uh, PS3 Slim, yes, this is important to get right. Uh, it does not work with the PS3 Fat, the old PS3s. The problem with that is that the old PS3 is too heavy. Like, it's not too big. It'll fit in the box, but it's too heavy. And if the thing is shaken around, there's a chance it could break the screen. And if the screen's broken, then this is... It's not very good. <laughs> the next issue is overheating. One of the primary concerns with this device from Xbox owners, not PS3 owners, because PS3 is designed to run much cooler, is that if you run the Xbox on this device, will it overheat? And the simple answer is no, it's been designed so that your ports on all the sides, except of course for the bottom, are open. And your Xbox should not overheat here any more than it will elsewhere in your living room. PS3 users, you have no reason to concern about this, because PS3s just don't overheat. For the next part of this review, we're going to talk briefly about the remote. It's got a power button for on and off. These navigate the menu. That is the menu button. We have a brightness button, so we can change the brightness a little bit. I had it like there. I think that's how I had it. Got your basic uh, mute, uh, volume down, volume up. It's a pretty thin remote. It's pretty simple, made of plastic. Reasonably durable. It runs on these little, I don't know if you can see the inscription, these little round batteries, so when they run out, that'll be a problem. But for what it's worth, it does the trick, and if this doesn't work, you have all of your buttons still available here on the front. I wish I had something a little bit more exciting than this to show to talk about the monitor, but I kind of don't because all my situation is in boxes. But we're going to talk about the monitor. This is the part of the review that's unique to my channel because uh, this information is not normally advertised. The monitor is 18.5 inches diagonal. It is an LED uh, monitor, so that's a good thing. It only runs in 720p. I initially thought it might have been 1080, but this is a 720p monitor. It runs at the really crazy like 1366x768 resolution. I believe that it's only 720p for cost cutting purposes or for practicality, maybe power supply or maybe response time, because we're going to talk about response time in a little bit. Either way, I wish it was 1080p, but it is 720p. and. Honestly, I didn't really notice the difference until I bothered to look it up. It's a 60 hertz monitor. Now, 60 hertz is actually a good thing. You see a lot of new HDTVs uh, advertised as being like some sort of fancy 120 hertz, 400 hertz, some crazy amount of hertz. This actually really screws up your, your sampling, and if you get it too high, it makes movies look like soap operas. Your movies will look normal here, so that's a good thing. I actually go and hunt the 60 hertz. Uh, the colors are good. It's advertised as having 16.7 million colors. I don't know what that means in English other than that it looks good enough to me, it looks good while I used it and I can change some of those settings on the Xbox. The important thing is the response time. For those of you that don't know, the response time is what reduces ghosting and it has also some components with input delay so that you get no input delay on the monitor or pretty much none. Uh, you can't get, it's impossible to get down to zero. That's just, everything's going to have that. But it will vary between 1.5 to 3.5 milliseconds in response time. 
As it was explained to me, the onboard card here is very simple with the only the one HDMI port. It's going to average closer to 2 milliseconds or the 1.5, but they have tested it and it has under some circumstances had 3.5 milliseconds. That's still excellent as most, uh, even good TVs are like 4 milliseconds, usually they're around 5, 6, 7, 8, something like that. So the response time is excellent. Overall, this is an ideal monitor minus the resolution. All the specs are really, really good. I just wish the resolution was higher. It's not. That might do some funny things for capture cards if you're forcing 1080p. And uh, oh yeah, it's capture card compatible, so that's a good thing. Three things left to discuss. We're going to discuss a big marketing misstep by this company in dealing with me and other reviewers. We're also going to discuss if I like this product or not, and if I do, where you can get it, and all that sort of stuff, and the pricing options. When I get a product like this, as a YouTuber, as a product reviewer, I try to do in-depth reviews, good reviews. They, some, some companies just send me something and they're like, here you go, do whatever. Some companies send me something, we need a review in a week, we need it in a month. Some companies will, you have to do this, this, and this, you have to say it's good, in which case, no, I don't talk to them. You have to go over these features, that's okay. You have to say these features are good, no, no, no. This one was pretty free range, but they did send me a press kit, and in the press kit it says, and I kid you not, this is ridiculous. Do not ever call the Games PGE a portable gaming environment. It must be called a personal gaming environment. Do not ever describe it as a portable Xbox case, a gaming suitcase, a suitcase, or a bag. Those are all things that I'm not supposed to say in the review, and I will tentatively adhere to that in context. But the reality is that the company wants to market this not as an Xbox box or a PS3 TV to go. They want to market this as a gaming device that you use everywhere. Part of the information I got said 70% of people use this in their home and they don't travel with it. So they want me to describe it in a way such that it is a personal gaming environment for you, just for you in your home, however you want it, wherever you want it. And when you travel, instead of moving TVs, using the hotel TV, or doing without, you take your gaming situation and move it with you so there's nothing to adjust to. And that's a pretty good idea with this. I think that's a good thing. And I know some people that do actually use this as their primary when they, well, because they travel, they use this as their primary. But I think it's silly for to ask me to not describe this as a portable Xbox unit or portable anything, because clearly it's portable and that's the number one use on it. The next thing we want to talk about is, do I like this device? Yes, I do. I think it's really cool. I have a lot of fun with it. It's been really useful to me while I've, while I've been traveling now. And on my future trips, where I'll be going to PAX soon and other places, this is coming with me. This isn't going to be my primary gaming system in the home, as I have my whole capture card PC TV recording setup studio done. It can be. It's not bad. I played on it for a while, almost a week. Good. Don't really need it. I'll use it when I travel. Lastly is, where can you buy this device? Uh, they were originally selling them through their own website, but they've changed their distribution methods. They've decided to go with Scuf Gaming as their primary distributor, and I'll be doing, so that's why I use the Scuf controller. And I'll be doing Scuf reviews uh, later this week with the hybrid, but they're, just, they're, they're distributing on Scuf Gaming, so if you're interested in buying my normal Scuf coupon DRFT, there's no I, just DRFT, like Team Drift, uh, we'll work on scuffgaming.com, EU, US, UK, 5% uh, off if you're interested in it. That's where you can get it. Other places, Amazon, uh, Aftermarket, not necessarily sure about. I don't have codes for. I know it works on Scuff. Well, that's all for the review. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. Drifter out.